sometimes you listen to a song or you try to play it and you're like, What's happening? What's the timing of this? What? What? Huh? No, no, that's not. So if I encounter such a problem, I just try to break it down to see what's happening. Have a closer look at it. And in the end, you can always figure out what's messing with your head. So short disclaimer, to make everything a little more clear, I'm showing an exaggeration of reality in this video. Sometimes the process takes a few seconds, sometimes a few minutes, but this is all to help me visualize and explain clearly what I do when I encounter problems like these. Let's continue. So here are five intros that confused me just a little bit when I first heard them. Here's the first one. So every time I heard this intro lick, I started nodding my hand to the beat, only to find out my head is doing something terribly wrong when the band kicks in. Let's do it one more time. To me it feels like this lick starts on beat 1. And if you count like this, it makes sense. One, two, three, four. That's how I count it. But then the drum fill kicks in. When the verse starts, it feels like they just skipped an eighth note, shifting the entire beat 180 degrees. On the record, the guitar starts without a pulse, so that's why you don't have the grit that the lick is played over. But let's take a listen to the live version, where a drummer plays the beat with a hi-hat, as a sort of countdown. Two, three, four. So now the lick starts to make a little more sense. So it starts on the four and instead of on the one. One, two, three, four. Etc. So the lick starts at four and instead of what I thought, the one. Crazy, right? So I was looking at the original album track and I locked the song to a metronome, to a grid. Now we hear that it perfectly aligns to the beat, right? The click is exactly on the one, the two, the three, and the four. But if we add the intro to this, let's take a listen. It sounds a bit off, right? Like it's not really in time. This makes it sound even weirder for me, as if they just added the little intro before the song later uh, and didn't align it correctly or something. But anyways, it confused me. Oh, by the way, do you like this trap? You can win this. Find out later in this video how. Next up, we have The Prodigy with Invaders Must Die. For me, the first few times I heard this song, I was like, uh, let's just have a listen. <laughs> the bass line is as follows. Three, four, bum, bum, dun, 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 dun. And we write that down as follows. But when the guitar starts, it does not start on the beat you expect it to. Have a listen again to it. So all of this has a pretty logical explanation. Because the first note we hear is not actually on the first beat. It's the last eighth note of the bar before, or in this case a so-called pickup bar because it starts before the song actually starts. The second note of the bass line is actually the first beat. So you write it down correctly like this. And now with a metronome and it makes more sense. So if you hear a group of notes without a pulse, it can be a bit ambiguous by what is actually meant. But the moment you know it, it's difficult to go back to how you heard it the first time. So let's try it out. I made a part in Ableton. So this is how I heard it at first. At least that's how I thought it would be. But the first note being before the beat, so I drag the first note before bar one that this is, and the second note starts on the beat. So let's take a listen. So 
when you hear it like this, it's actually pretty, pretty easy. Um, so I don't know why I thought this was confusing, but yeah, I thought just one second. Moving on to the next one, it's Dream Theater with The Mirror. Okay, I have to admit that there is only a handful of songs by this band that don't have a confusing element in it, but this intro is so obviously written to deceive the listener with a rhythmic trick that it's hard to not put it in. It's pretty straightforward, so a great example for this video. Okay, so let's first have a listen to the song. All right, so you're clearly thrown off when the groove kicks in. At first you think the pulse is like this. No, we need heavier, heavier guitar. So while we're here, I wanna ask you, have you already subscribed to my channel? If not, please do, thank you so much. Let's continue. One, two, three, four. And when the drums kick in, they highlight the accents. So I hear this as a group of uh, three sixteenth notes and one sixteenth rest, like this. So now I wrote the drums down as a dotted eighth note and uh, the guitar as 16th notes with one rest. And you can write it down like this and it sounds good, but it's not correct, it's not entirely correct, because the pulse, the beat, clearly is like this. We clearly need to count in groups of three. So uh, what's actually happening is that we play it in a 12-8 time signature, because a 12-8 time signature is counted as four groups of three eighth notes. But what makes it weird is that the guitar at the same time is playing a pattern in groups of four, creating a nice polyrhythmic groove with the drums and guitar. So this is how you should write it down. Look, a 12 8 time signature. And now the drums are playing dotted quarter notes, which is the duration of one beat in a 12 8 time signature. So this makes way more sense. So very cool. And later when the vocals start, the groove goes back to a plain 4 4 time signature. So this song tricks you multiple times using very simple three note pattern and one rest. Um, so definitely check out this entire song and band if you're into this. So next up, James Taylor, Secret of Life. I need an acoustic. I love it when it works. So the next intro is just really, uh, I don't know, man. It just, it starts on beat one. Uh, it's just a few finger picked chords, but there is something that just throws me off so much and I don't know. So just, let's have a listen. So when I think the biggest problem for me is that I first heard this song without giving it too much attention. So I just somehow hardwired my brain that these notes are played on the beats. Dun, dun, dun. So when I try to move the low notes in my head to one end, two end and three end, the places where they are played, I just I just don't feel it. The way I feel it, which is pretty weird, is to write it down in a 9 8 and 7 8 time signature, like this. Let me count it. So that's pretty weird as well. So maybe just play it 10 times, 100 times and you start to internalize it correctly, but anyways, his picking patterns are always pretty strange, uh, but also very cool and interesting to check out. So if you haven't checked him out, make sure you do, James Taylor. And now here is the Foo Fighters with The Pretender. Back to the last ball, I guess, yeah. So when I heard this intro first, I remember I always felt as if it was one eighth note too long. So let's have a listen. In the verses, which basically use the same chords, the changes from A to F sharp to F are on the beat. But in this intro, they fall just before the beat, accented with the strings as well. So when I hear these notes, I think, ah, that's the beat. Dun. 
So when I hear these notes, the F sharp and the F, I think, ah, that's the beat. And paired with the uh, offbeat accents, the... Landing on that F sharp, to me that feels like the one. But uh, it's not. No, it's not true. No. Then when the vocals kick in, I'm like, wait a minute, why is, did he start too late or what? what's happening? So at the time the song came out and you would ask me to play it, I would probably play something like this. then I would be kicked out of the band immediately. So this is how we should do it. Etc. So pretty cool and it throws me off a little bit. But well, not anymore because now I'm used to playing it like this. But it used to. So I recently got a few of these beautiful straps handmade in Germany by a Pivo, and I'm happy to say that we're giving away three of these. So if you're interested, join the giveaway via the link in the description and maybe you can win one of these beautiful straps yourself. Cheers, have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bye.